these are probably, I'd say, at least a week old. Larvae are a little bit more developed in there. Herpetologist Charlie Eichelberger is holding up a mass of eggs from a Jefferson salamander, one of several animals that depend on temporary wetlands called vernal pools to survive. I'm Jorge Ribas for Discovery News, and I'm standing actually inside of a vernal pool, which is sort of the oasis of the forest. Every spring they fill up with melting snow and rainwater, then just as quickly dry up in the hot summer months. In this area, we had about 40 inches of snow in February, so these pools are really overflowing with water this year. On this chilly March afternoon, we're on the hunt for salamanders. We find a red spotted newt and some red backed salamanders, but none of the spotted, marbled, or Jefferson salamanders that inhabit the pools. Plenty of their eggs, though. When will these eggs hatch? Anywhere from a few weeks to a couple months. The goal for the salamanders is to get out onto land before the pool dries. It's that drying period that's a key characteristic of vernal pools. When it dries down, it excludes any fish populations that might have come in. And those conditions make it uh, prime habitat for developing larval salamanders and frogs and toads that are specialized to use this type of wetland. Invertebrates like fairy shrimp also thrive here, kind of a freshwater equivalent of sea monkeys. They're not in the same family, but they're, they're a crustacean. At the end of the season, whoever's in here lays that desiccant resistant, freeze resistant egg, and it needs to get dried out before it'll respond to uh, the flooding in the spring and then it'll hatch. Why and where vernal pools form vary from region to region. Here, clay and other tightly packed soils keep water from draining too quickly. While development, pollution, and climate change all pose serious threats to the health of these ecosystems, the biggest challenge to their protection may be their temporary nature. Some of them are, show up so quickly and disappear so quickly that people don't even realize that they are vernal pools. So landowners oftentimes fill the pools up because they don't realize that they are a wetland. People who don't know what's living here see this and say, oh, it's just like a gross mosquito pond. Right. So how do you get people excited to, to, and say, no, you know, this is something worth saving? The whole reason I'm doing what I'm doing is because uh, a high school biology teacher of mine uh, showed me photographs of all the, the cool life that's in these pools and actually took me out to one and that got me hooked right from the get-go. Yeah. And uh, so I try to do that as much as I can and, and let people know how, what unique habitats these are. If you're not out here at the right time of year, on the right night, in the worst weather, you're not going to really see a lot of these amphibians. They're very secretive, but uh, if you get it just in the right conditions, it's really something else to see all these mass migration of amphibians coming here and listening to the frogs calling and they're really spectacular places. From Kings Gap State Park near Carlisle, Pennsylvania, for Discovery News, I'm Jorge Rivas.